sermon series on the armor of God. And over the past two months, I have been encouraging each of you to put on the armor of God every day to be able to fight against the sin and the evil that's around us here on this earth. There's a humorous story about a young man who was involved in his first battle. And the young man became afraid and he started moving backwards. He backed up a little, then backed up some more, and soon he was running from the battle. The young man kept running and running until finally an officer stopped him. He pointed a gun at his head and said, Stop, soldier, or I'll shoot you. And the soldier said, I'm sorry, Captain. Give me another chance. Well, the officer felt sorry for the young man, and he said, Okay, I'll give you another chance, but look a little closer here. I'm not a captain. I'm a colonel. And the young man apologized and said, I'm sorry, colonel. I didn't realize I had gone that far from the front line. Have you ever been involved on the front lines of a battle? Now, I know most of us have never been involved in a war, have we? But you realize every single day, you and I are involved on the front lines of a battle. The battle that we are fighting every day is the battle against what's right and what's wrong. It's a battle against what is good and what is bad. The Apostle Paul knew all about being in this kind of a battle. For you see, when Paul wrote the words to the people in the city of Ephesus, he was in prison. Literally, he was in chains in prison. Now, why was he in prison? Well, he was in prison because he wouldn't stop talking about Jesus. He was in prison because he wouldn't stop telling people that Jesus died on a cross and he rose from the dead to forgive every one of their sins, to overcome death for them, so that if they would put their trust in him, they could have eternal life in heaven. That's why Paul was in prison. Paul was really in a battle against sin and evil in the world of his day. But look at what Paul says here. In the midst of his suffering, Paul encourages the people in Ephesus to be strong in the Lord. And then Paul gives them six pieces of armor that they should put on every day to be able to help them when they're suffering for their faith in Jesus. Paul gives them these six pieces of armor to give them some hope in fighting against the battle against sin and evil. Now, these words of Paul, they're written for you and me here today. Because you see, that's the way it always is with the Word of God. The Word of God is written in such a way where God uses His Word to encourage us no matter at what place or at what situation we are in our lives. And today, God is encouraging you and me to be strong in the Lord. God's encouraging you and me to put on his armor so that we can be able to stand firm when our faith is being challenged. God wants us to put on his armor so we can be strong, so that we can have hope in our battle against sin and evil as well. Well, Today, God tells us to put on the helmet of salvation so we can have the certainty of knowing that no matter what happens to us here on this earth, we are going to heaven through our faith in Jesus. God tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness so that every day we can be certain that God will forgive every one of our sins because Jesus died on a cross and rose from the dead for us. God tells us 
to put on the belt of truth, encouraging us to be honest and trustworthy in our lives. God encourages us to put on the shoes of peace to help us to have more loving relationships with the people God has placed in our life. God tells us to take with us the shield of faith so that he can give us hope and strength against anything the devil might send our way. God tells us to take with us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, to help us to be able to fight against what's wrong and what's evil in this world. And we need to take these six pieces of armor with us every single day. There was a man named Ron who served on the volunteer fire department in his community. And Ron says that one of the most important aspects in surviving as a firefighter is to be sure you take all of your protective gear with you before you go out to fight a fire. It is so important that the firefighters constantly remind themselves to put on all of their gear before they go out to fight a fire. One time, Ron and another firefighter were going to put out a, a car fire. The engine was on fire. And Ron and his friend made sure that they had all their protective gear with them before they left to put out the fire. And it was a good thing they did. Because as they were pouring the normal water and foam mixture on the car engine, it exploded. And it sent flaming debris into their faces. If they would not have had their face gear on, they would have been badly injured. But because they did, they were able to get through without being injured. The gear protected them every day. We need to wear the armor of God to protect us against all of the sin and the evil in this world. Every day there are people who are going to attack our faith in Jesus. Every day there are people who will attack us and they'll try to change the Word of God. Every day there are people who want to take away any comfort, any hope we might have of forgiveness and heaven. We need to wear this protective armor of God every single day. Now, we've been talking throughout this summer's sermon series about the armor of God not being just for you and me, but the armor of God is meant for all of us to wear. It's meant for all of us as the church of Jesus to wear together. Because when we're wearing together the armor of God, we can be a strong army for good here in this world. God can use us to make a big difference for him here in this world. That's why the Apostle Paul encouraged the people of Ephesus years ago to pray for one another and to support one another. That's why God encourages you and me today to pray for one another and to support each other. A Sunday school teacher once had her children write a letter to a missionary telling him that they were praying for him. Now the teacher told her students that they shouldn't expect a letter back from the missionary because the missionary probably wouldn't have time to answer their letter. One little girl reflected this in her letter when she wrote, Dear Reverend Smith, we are all praying for you, but we really don't expect an answer. I'm afraid that's many times the way we pray to God in our church. I think many times when we pray to God, we don't always expect Him to answer, and yet God answers every prayer we pray. He answers our prayers in many different ways. Every week when we pray for one another here in church, God answers our prayers in some amazing ways. People are healed of major illnesses. Family problems disappear. Jobs are found. Hope is given. One time, some army troops were participating 
in a military training exercise in the Mojave Desert. Jim Bolton and his crew, they started to get separated from the rest of the troops. You see, the vehicle they were in got stuck in the sand. And they kept trying and trying to free their vehicle from the sand, and they couldn't. Nothing worked. And the rest of the troops were getting farther and farther away from them. Surprisingly, Jim and his fellow soldiers got together and they prayed to God for help. And after praying to God, they felt this peace surrounding them and they went and tried again to get the vehicle out of the sand and this time it worked. They were able to free their vehicle and to get back with the rest of the troops. God had quickly answered their prayer. Today, we live in very difficult times. Our Christian values and beliefs are constantly being questioned, aren't they? In the media every day, our Christian values are being attacked. Every day in the political world, our Christian values are being attacked. We need to stand strong together to be able to get through these difficult times. We need to regularly pray to God for strength because as we're working together, we won't give up. We'll stand strong together and we'll find from God the strength and the help we need. So each day, let God work through the armor that he gives to you. Let God work through the helmet of salvation, through the breastplate of righteousness. Let God work through the belt of truth and the shoes of peace that he gives you. Let God work through the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit that he gives you. Because with God working through us, big differences can happen in this world. May God bless us as we all continue to wear his armor for Jesus' sake, amen.